Hello guys, welcome back to another video with me, ARC Exotics, and in this video we're going to be talking about something a little bit different. We're going to be talking about British wildlife, more importantly reptiles. Now we can cover other sort of um, British wildlife topics if this does well, um, like amphibians and birds so on, but obviously our channel mainly being reptiles and the reptiles we keep all around this room and we thought it'd only be right to do reptiles first. What we're going to do is talk to you about all the reptiles that are native in the UK and some that are obviously non-native that have um, become sort of invasive in terms but what we're going to do is basically guide you through with this book as well, Wildlife of Britain, really good book, um, got it a few years ago and basically has everything in, don't need to google nothing or sort of double check nothing, everything in here, straight facts, but there is one reptile which isn't in this book, which is in the UK. What is that? If you know before, comment down below, but if not, find out and see what it is. But other than that, let's get in to the first reptile. So firstly, let's talk about the famous adder. Now this is, I think, the only venomous snake within the UK and it is a really cold tolerant species of snake um, and it is found well within the arctic circle and it's the most northerly snake in the whole world so they can kind of tolerate like really good sort of bad weather which we're known for in the UK um, and they're found to mo mostly occupy like heathlands and moorlands and stuff like that with lots of sort of bush and overgrow where they can basically hide away um, now there's also a nickname in the UK called like the tire, the tire track snake because they've kind of got like a almost like a tire track marking going down them. I don't think too much, but I've heard that saying used to associate the adder quite a lot. I try and sort of um, put a photo up somewhere here where you can actually see the kind of tire track markings. But yeah, like I say, the adder really, really sort of um, most talked about snake definitely in the UK, just purely because there's not that many species of snake here. And when somebody says adder, most people jump because they hear it's venomous and they get worried. When really haven't really got to be too worried about it biting you in the UK, depending on where you are, but especially in an urban environment like a housing estate or something like that. Uh, mostly, I think the main sort of trouble they cause are like for dog walkers when the dogs are rummaging in the bushes and they bite the ankles or sort of um, the, the throat, depending on how small the dog is. But most dogs do live to tell the tale if they get medical advice. Um, but yeah, other than that, they're a pretty good snake. So adders kind of hibernate between September, October to February, March. Now when they do actually come out and are sort of an active snake, um, they don't often sort of bask in the sun too much. They do bask, but they don't try and actually bring themselves out into the sun to be exposed to it. And they'll often hunt sort of in the evening, dusk and dawn kind of times where it's a little bit cooler. So like I say, they're really not a hot species tolerant snake. Um, and they can you know, tolerate the cold quite well. So overall that covers a very basic knowledge of an adder. There is so much more, again, especially in this book, so definitely pick one up and check it out. But we're talking about the whole six of the reptiles in the UK, so that was number one. So let's get on to number two and talk about that one. So the second reptile on the list is actually another snake. Now this is the grass snake, and a lot of you have probably seen a grass snake if you're in the UK. Um, I definitely have, but I've never seen an adder. Now, a lot of people see grass snakes much more than they do adders, and that is because in the UK there is a lot of lakes and ponds, and grass snakes basically do all their hunting in and around lakes or ponds. So they either sort of you'll see them um, actually swimming across the water. That is where I once saw one when I was fishing, and they come right up to the bank. And obviously, when people are fishing, there's bait like ham and stuff like that and that attracts mouse and obviously the snake can come in and then take care of them as well so it all kind of runs its own ecosystem even with us involved as well but like i say again they'll hibernate from kind of like october to march and they'll do a lot of their sort of hunting and living in and around water and they are really strong swimmers as well but again much smaller in size in terms of adders adders are a bit more bigger bodied um, and the grass snake is a bit more sort of thinner kind of like a corn snake at a young age but yeah again another pretty cool snake and more commonly seen than the adder for sure and obviously non-venomous now these snakes are most easily identified by the kind of olivey green body now that is dependent on sex but the most thing that deters what they are in terms of IDing them is the little kind of yellowy orange I'd say more orange than one I've seen but yeah kind of like an, a yellowy orange ring around the neck 
um, and it runs all the way around a solid um, ring so yeah that is kind of a good way to ID them especially if you're not sure on your reptiles and you don't know if it is a venomous snake because sometimes it's mistaken for that by people that are unaware um, and again kind of is found anywhere around marshlands um, like streams that lead to rivers and ponds anything like that sort of marshy boggy ground um, so yeah they are quite commonly found in and around the UK unlike the other where they're more sort of um, located to one kind of area as such so now we're moving on to our third species which actually isn't a snake now this is a lizard called the viviparous lizard more commonly known by other people that aren't so into reptiles as just the common lizard now these are actually sort of declining um, and there's a lot more information on that as well and not so much in this book because obviously this is an older book now from when sort of times are changing and there's more um, bad things happening in the world but yeah they're actually sort of not as common as what they used to be now the common lizard is also confused very much so with the sand lizard now they are slightly different because the common lizard has more of a kind of um, grey brown colour with sort of black lines and almost kind of dots to the side going down it even though they are similar in size a lot of people do get mixed up the sand lizard does tend to be on paper a bit more rare but I mean the common lizard is soon catching up to them because there is just you know a lot of decline deforestation loads of things like that so yeah it definitely is catching up to the sand lizard in terms of um, sort of rare ability and being uncommon but not very good but other than that I'll try and add a few photos up and maybe I'll add a comparison up to the sand lizard as well but other than that not much to say on them they're pretty robust pretty hardy um, and yeah they're an overall pretty cool lizard if you can see them so now we're talking about in comparison to the common lizard, the sand lizard. Now the sand lizard, lizard is a much more kind of um, differently built lizard. The common lizard is kind of very little and, and sort of, you know, yeah, just, just small sort of bodied lizard. Now the sand lizard has very short head, so it doesn't kind of come out long ways like a monitor would. A very sort of narrowed head and very short legs but quite a sort of robust body. So they're built quite differently. And because they have sort of developed like that, they have got quite poor climbing abilities. I mean, they can still climb <laughs> pretty good for, for a reptile, but in terms of overall climbing, um, it's not the best. But yeah, again, sand lizards are pretty colourful as well compared to the commons. I'll try and add a photo up somewhere, but they do colour up quite nicely as well. Now, the diet for both the sand lizard and the common lizard are pretty similar. Um, the common lizard eating more crustaceans in terms of like snails, spiders, insects. Mm. With the sand lizard also eating stuff like insects and you know so on, mm. like worms. But you can also eat things like fruit and flowers as well. Now the next one we're going to talk about, by me saying this next bit here, you'll probably already know what it is. It's often mistaken for a snake when it isn't. It's actually a lizard without legs, a legless lizard, also known as the slow worm. Now the slow worm is the first um, reptile I've ever seen in the UK. Now I see it when I was walking when I was younger with my granddad and I was actually quite frightened because I was mistaken it for a snake as well. Again I was quite young I didn't really know what things were like that in detail and I just saw a body similar to a snake and um, my granddad was telling me to pick it up and I was too scared and he actually picked it up and showed me that it done no harm at all um, and then returned it to the spot where we found it from. Now again, that is again a common mistake in terms of your your thinking as a snake. But it is a legless lizard, and they're pretty cool. They've got quite a blunt sort of um, narrow head, again for the burrowing down. Now these are commonly found in kind of like grasslands, high you know high vegetation areas with a lot of um, a lot of cover. Now to heat up in the UK, they're often found under things like um, metal sheets. So like if you're on a walk and there's some rubbish or some sort of where a building used to be say and there's a metal sheet which is on the floor that is obviously getting penetrated by the sun and that heats up nicely so underneath there creates a nice kind of warm environment now in the summer a lot of people go over and sort of turn over sheets and stuff like that and they often find slow worms and it's probably the easiest way to find them but again make sure you always put them back because then it sort of puts them prone to um, attacks from birds and stuff like that but very cool uh, quite dark coloured, sort of really kind of dark brown, almost black, depends on sort of what you see. A um, little bit lighter on the underbelly, but again, no, nonetheless, just as cool as any of the others on this list. And because it's the first one I see, it's always got a special place. 
um, and I think they're really really cool. Now the one which is the last one and actually isn't in this book is the very rare smooth snake. Now this is often found alongside the very rare sand lizard as well purely because they kind of habitat the same areas like um, well, pretty much like we explained with the sand lizard, they're very much found in them kind of habitats. Now, I actually don't know too much about this snake, so I did have to have a little Google and a little search, and I was quite interested by what I found. Basically, sand is only in very few heathlands and sites where it's just not recorded that much, or they are there, but they've just never been spotted to being recorded. Um, so, yeah, very, very elusive snake. Not one that I could say I've ever seen or sort of come close to, not that I know of anyway, but again, nonetheless, pretty cool. So these guys bask in the sun and they hibernate from basically anywhere in the region of October to April, and that's when they kind of start to struggle to warm up in the UK because that's when our nights really close in, starts getting darker, um, and obviously there's less sun in the daytime. Um, and that's when they sort of struggle to hunt because then they wouldn't be warm enough and so on and so forth. And in the spring, they'll actually, the males will actually compete to win females. Um, and then the females will obviously breed with the males and they'll incubate their eggs internally. And they'll come in about September time, I think. But um, I'll try and add a photo up somewhere here and show you how cool it looks. So that covers all of the reptiles that are native in the UK. Um, again, there's not too many considering we're an island, it's not too bad, I guess. Um, but yeah, obviously it'd be cool to have an absolute abundance of them, like in Florida, say, where there's just endless amounts and really cool stuff as well, like the iguanas. But I quite like the stuff we've got in here. Um, it's very sort of uh, limited around Europe and it's pretty cool to have. But like I say, if you want me to do more topics with this book as well, um, there's an absolute abundance of aquatic amphibian stuff in here so we could go sort of endless into that and even more so with birds and so on and so forth but let me know if you have enjoyed it enough to have a part two and we'll get that to you and we'll do some research on all the amphibians because I don't know an awful lot about them but other than that that's covered this video on UK reptiles thank you very much for watching it's been me at the exotics stay tuned for another video next week